Miss Mesa, congratulations on successfully completing your long distance ride challenge. You now join a small community of motorcyclists from around the world that have managed to tackle and successfully solve the challenge of time and distance to earn the enclosed ride certification. I'm so pumped. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the Iron Butt Association. I officially have a membership number, which is super cool. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This means a lot. I know it's just a piece of paper. I know it is. But for me, being included into this association was my whole, like, game plan for this all. So the reason for this video is that I wanted to share my top lessons learned from completing my first Saddle Sore 1000 ride 1k in a day ride as well because you can do both of them collaboratively together. But I wanted to share um, some of my mistakes and some of my lessons learned. What are the things that really worked well for me and some of the things that didn't. So let's get into the video. I'm sitting in a bouncy chair, so if you see me, <laughs> it's my office chair. So first one is you're going to learn a lot about yourself, how you are as a writer, how you are as a planner, and how much you really enjoy or don't enjoy long distance writing. Honestly, it's not as hard as you think it is. So let's dive into the mistakes part first. The first one for me and the biggest one for me was my breaks for each of the stops. So I rode a 2003 Harley Davidson Sportster 883. This is not the most ideal touring bike, um, but I made it work for what I had. And these brakes had to be unfortunately a little bit shorter. Um, because I didn't have much in the gas tank. My gas tank mileage, or like amount of mileage was 125 max, I think. And I spaced out all of my 16 stops in about 100 mile marks, just to make sure I wasn't going, you know, too close to that empty gas tank and had to use the reserve. I just didn't want to, want to get to that point. So I was very strategic in the breaks of where I was, but the amount of time that I spent on those breaks ate up a lot. Especially during my lunch period, I took way longer than what I needed to. It was nice, but honestly, I paid for it towards the end of the evening into the very early hours of the next day um, because I ate up so much time from that. So I had originally scheduled about 10 to 15 minutes each gas station stop for me, but it ended up being probably closer to 15 to 20, maybe even 30, depending on what I was doing. So I was moto vlogging. Um, I was actually doing my certification part for the Iron Butt Association to make sure I've got all of the gas receipts on my phone and, you know, um, timed out and wrote out. But then I also was checking in on my Instagram account too, because there was followers that were following me along throughout the day. So if you add all of that up, plus stopping into the gas station to grab something to eat or go to the bathroom, that ate up quite a bit of time. And so if you are not riding on your bike and getting to that next point, you're not gaining that mileage and you're just eating up time that you should be riding. So lesson learned for me, biggest one, is just be really efficient with your gas station stops. I uh, um, would recommend that you practice this a handful of times before just so you know where everything is on your bike. I had um, a tank bag with a pencil case holder that had all of my receipts in it, my um, Sharpie marker, backup Sharpie in case something happened, but all of those were in a Ziploc bag and I knew that if anything all else fails, I have all my certification as well as on my phone as a backup. So second biggest mistake that I had for my route was the navigation. Now this wasn't substantial because I, like I said, I had everything planned out to the exact gas station stop and their address along with, you know, like the hours of operation, everything. So it wouldn't have gone array, but the only thing was is that towards the, this is everything kind of happened towards the um, 
very late hours of the evening into the early morning of the next day. I let my phone get way too long into pretty much the critical battery area and forgot to put my battery pack back onto the charger to charge my phone. So this was holding, you know, my Google Maps directions to get me to that next gas station, but it also was um, recording my Reaver route so that I just had documentation for myself to know, you know, I actually did complete this route. But then as far as the certification side for the Iron Bread Association, I was using an app called SW Connect. And then that was feeding my like tracking GPS pins to the Spotwalla account is what they recommend for the Iron Butt Association. So because my phone got into that critical zone of low battery, it started to close out apps. And so unfortunately I missed about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer in my tracking that was not, not tracked because my phone was trying to save <laughs> save itself um so i didn't realize this because i was just purely exhausted at that point of the evening it was probably well i say morning now it was three o'clock in the morning for me and i didn't realize it until i went to the next gas stop because every gas stop that i did i w made sure that my reaver was still logging and at least my sw connect was still connecting to Spotwalla. so i realized that in between which is always a good um kind of just double check but I missed those spots. Not critical at all. I still received my certification, but it's something that kind of have to be smarter about. So if you're using your phone as your GPS and everything else, just make sure you've got everything prepared, whether that's, you know, connecting it automatically to your bike if you have that luxury. I unfortunately <laughs> do not but um, making sure that you do, or if it's your Garmin GPS, making sure that that is always connected and there isn't any hiccups when it comes to the navigation and the certification part to make sure that you actually completed the route that you said you did. <laughs> that helps. The third mistake, I guess for me, was rest. And I've been told this before, before I started my route that, you know, rest when you are tired, like take that break. For me, I started off at six o'clock in the morning and it's not so, like not bad, but I wish I would have started way earlier into the early hours of the morning. So that way when I finish, it wasn't like flip flopped, so to speak. So it took me 23 hours to complete this because I mentioned of all of those longer breaks but also um starting earlier in the morning leads to longer in the evening into the morning hours for the next day if you're doing that 24 hour portion so i was awake for probably 26 to 27 hours for the entire route and that fatigue set in <laughs> immensely around that like three, four o'clock in the morning, Mark, and you can definitely see it on my moto vlog video, just how purely tired I was. And I rode a little bit longer than probably what I should have, and it was, to be honest, a little dangerous from that point. Granted, there wasn't a lot of cars and traffic on the road at that point in time, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Like, I should have stopped, and I stopped when I could, got to the next gas station. It was, unfortunately, a little bit more, um, before the actual gas station that I originally meant to be at, but because I was in Wisconsin again, I knew I knew the gas stops. <laughs> Thankfully, with riding all of those rustic roads and whatnot, but I found that gas station. I actually located a picnic table that was off the side stopped, you know, put the bike away and put two <laughs> alarms on my phone to make sure I woke up. But I took that 15 to 20 minute cat nap that really I needed in order to finish my ride. And so if you are fatigued at all around that, like, you know, it normally sets in about the 200, 200 or less mark, take that break. Make it small, just efficient so that you can get what you need to do and still be able to keep within that time frame that you've had envisioned. 
but be smart about it because that's the last thing you want to happen is um, an accident to do because you were just purely exhausted. So yeah, let's go into some of the things I guess that worked well for me. The first one is I went solo. I know there's a lot of people that have questioned, you know, why I didn't have a riding partner with me for that time. And I actually enjoyed riding by myself. There are some individuals that really mesh and work well together and if you've done something like this before have done longer longer distances then absolutely go ahead and ride together because you're going to fuel off each other but also it's going to come at a cost too if one is ready and a little bit you know more energized to go and the other one's tailoring back it's going to come at a cost for one way or the other but just make sure that you mesh well together in order to ride together because you're going to be for a while. <laughs> but I enjoyed riding solo. I found what worked as far as motivation goes for me because it's just a lot of seat time. You're by yourself. I needed to have my radio stations on. Just I didn't even need like my music so to speak, but just to flip through on my Bluetooth communication device, like just flip through those channels to find something different to catch um, my attention for a little bit longer. And then also the moto vlogging and the Instagram um, check-ins really helped me keep my brain going creatively um, because there's always something that you can talk about or moto vlog when you're writing, but then also um, the check-ins too to make sure that everybody knows that you're you're okay. But um, those helped me just riding solo for myself. The second thing that worked well for me was my organization. And I think this is the biggest one that I can take away is that I was super nerdy when it came to the planning part of it. And that's, I think, the part that I loved the most was figuring out the exact route, how long it's gonna take me from one place to the next. I'm actually going to do a video after this. I'll include it in a link above my head once I post it for you guys, but I'll go into very, very like specific detail of how I planned out my route, what gas stations I did, um, even down to the Excel documents and all of that part. But organization was absolutely key for me because if I didn't have them laid out, one, my gas stops would have been a little bit iffy when it came up to the um, upper peninsula of Michigan with the very sparse uh, gas stations that were there and operating during that time of the evening because it was actually 11 o'clock midnight and some of them actually shut down for the night. So making sure I had each gas stop, the exact address, the time it would take me to get to that location, how long it'll take for my breaks, when I need to leave for that next stop, and then hours of operation all, all of that. So I'll go into that detail in the video. Um, I'll put it in the link in the description too when I'm finished with it, but that helped me. And also if I was just to go casually go for a thousand mile ride, I don't think I would have completed it in the time that I did on the Sportster. I think with a larger touring bike, I might have, and if you find like those interstate roads where you can just go and eat up those miles, absolutely. But for me, I think the organization part really helped me get that certification that I needed to be a part of the Iron. The last one I want to share with you guys is ride your ride. Like it shouldn't matter what bike you had. I had a lot of questions and concerns and praise and who knows whatever else with taking my little sporty out for that thousand mile plus loop. For me, <laughs> yes, you can. It shouldn't matter any bike that you do. There are some individuals, a lot of individuals actually, within the Iron Butt Association that do the rally events on smaller bikes than what I have too. So whatever you have and whatever you are most comfortable on, absolutely just be 100% honest with yourself. If you know you can do it and you know you can plan it out, then absolutely be smart about it and ride that ride. But just ride whatever you have like I had that I had that bike sitting in my garage that's what I'm most comfortable on that's what I was gonna do it on so would I do it again on the sporty probably would I love to do it on the new touring bikes oh heck yes like after renting out some of those bikes I could easily easily do um, a saddle sore or a bun burner I wish I would have done this sooner than I did but I learned and found out that I 
absolutely love long distance riding, endurance riding. When I finished my saddle sore, I found a hotel close by, took about like a five hour cat nap, felt refreshed and I was like, all right, I've got another day and a half to ride by myself and I took full advantage of it and rode 600 plus miles the next like day and a half. So for me, I probably should have went for that bun burner um, for it's 1500 miles. Yeah, 1,500 miles in 36 hours. Probably could have gotten that certification, but I didn't have it planned out and I wasn't comfortable just trying to do it um, for the sake of doing it. I want to be strategic in that sense. But I learned that I absolutely love riding long distance and you're gonna find out that's something you love to do too. I would highly recommend um, recommend it if that's something you're interested in. Hopefully this video inspires you and really gives you that confidence to do it because you can, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I would love to get your feedback on there. If there's any questions or something else that you want to throw my way and also for the subscribers in the community that are watching this video as well that have done it before, leave your tips and tricks down below too and we'll kind of collaborate together and get you to do that certification because I would love you to be a part of this group. I'm like, this is something that not a lot of individuals can say that they're a part of being a part of the Iron Butt Association, but it sparked my interest and now has me looking for so much more because I enjoy these challenges. I'm like hesitant to say, but I don't, <laughs> I'm gonna say it because if I say it, it's gonna make it happen and I'm gonna actually do it. So I am looking at for 2021 doing the 48 states in 10 days challenge through the Iron Butt Association, which means I'm running all 48 states or at least some part of it, getting some documentation and doing that all within a 10 days mark or less. There are some individuals that have done it in like eight to nine. Um, so I am currently planning out my route, figuring out all of those details. I absolutely love that part, but that makes it real for me. So it's always something um, next and I'm excited to see where this goes, but I really hope you learned and was able to get something back from these lessons learned on my first Saddle Soar 1000. And I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see any more of that content, including that 48 state challenge that I do for this upcoming year and everything else in between. So thank you guys, take care.